Okay, this is an overview about what we're about to learn. So we're learning about folder and foldal. That's a function that takes in another function and a list and it combines it into one output. We'll look at both how to call it and what it's doing. So here, folder is provided the function plus an initial or sort of base case value of zero and then the list one, two, three, and we get the answer six because it's adding up all the elements in the list in addition to zero. Now technically this goes in a particular order. Um, so it goes first by calling the function on the last of L plus uh, with that function on that base case. And then outer calls are plus two and plus one. So probably using folder and plus, we actually only care about the sum and we don't care about what direction it gets added up in or what order really it gets added up in but we can see the order it gets added up in uh, here below. And again, I've highlighted that plus because remember that's a function that we pass to folder. And here we can see that it has to be a function that works with two inputs. Something that's a little confusing is the initial value is listed to the left of the list, uh, but then we end up actually calling the function with the last element of the list and that base case is the second value. Then once we calculate that, that becomes kind of the new base case value for our next element. And then that becomes the new value uh, that we use in our la for our first one. Okay, with full dole and the same input plus zero in the list one, two, three, we get the same answer. But the order in which it executes it is different. So we have plus three, plus two, plus one, and zero. Again, the plus sign is the function that we passed in. It has to take in two arguments. That always has to be a function that takes in two arguments. And again, that initial value is passed to the function as the second argument. Then we call the function with the first element, that's that inner part. And then the result of that becomes the second argument to the function call. And then the result of that becomes the second argument. Admitted these, these, admittedly, these lines crossing is a little confusing, but. Hopefully you can see the order that they get executed. And again, it doesn't matter for plus, uh, but it will matter for some other things. So I want you to pause here and think about if these two things are likely to have the same big O runtime and what you think the big O runtime of each would be. And you can pause, but I'll keep going. Okay, popping over to Racket, I want you to try and predict what the output would be of each of these calls. And here I'm using Foldal or Folder in each of the cases, and I'm using Cons and List. And with cons and list, obviously the order is going to matter, unlike plus. For example, on this one, we know that folder starts with the first element of the list. So the first call on the inside would be cons of one to the empty list. And then it keeps working its way out, cons of two to, to the result of that, and then cons of three to the result of that. So try and do that for the rest of them. So if you thought that they do not have the same big O runtime, you were correct. And actually the next few slides will trace through some recurrence relationships and some code uh, to see what those big O runtimes are. So for those four examples with foldal and folder and cons and list, we can see that because we started from the left hand side, that was the first calculation or the first cons call we did, um, we got three, two, one. So I've got the equivalent of just calling the cons explicitly there as well. Then for our folder cons, uh, it started with the right-hand side most things. So our first call was cons of three and the empty list. And I only really use folder or foldar. Sorry, I only use foldal or folder when I don't care about the order in which the values get calculated or computed but I think it's important for being able to look at the big O runtime of these. Okay, here are the list ones. So list, again, we with foldal, we started with the first calculation was a call to list of one and 42, so there 42 was the base case. Whereas with folder, we started with 42 as the second argument, and the last thing as the first argument. So we started with list three and 42. Okay, so, you know, talking about using the last or the but last, uh, that's like the equivalent of rest for first, so those you can think of as last and but last as pairs. And I want you to try and write a recurrence relationship for these. So you can pause it and I'll keep going. Okay, for both of them, we actually have the same recurrence relationship. So for an input of size one, 
it takes one step for an input of size n, where n is the length of the list. That's super important because our code doesn't use a variable n, so we have to say what n is. So for input of size n, where n is the length of the list, it takes one step, plus it makes a recursive call of one smaller. And in our class, we've seen this before. When we unrolled it, we saw that this one was O of N because we got one, sorry, we got N copies of that one. So now I have some mystery code for you. They're both implementing foldl or foldr, except one is using our regular first and rest to compute the answer. Another one is using last and but last. And in our recursion, normally we're taking things apart using first and rest and putting them back together with cons. But remember here, we're trying to come up with one answer. And so we end up just calling that function on the first and the result of the recursion. Okay, so try and puzzle through which one is gonna be fold dull and which one is gonna be fold r. Which one will lead to the first, the first calculation that's performed is with the last element. So now I filled in the actual function name. This one on the bottom is fold right or folder. And it's a little counterintuitive because when we make the recursive call, so we take the first and we make the recursive call with the rest and we go back and we make call the first and we make the recursive call with the rest, you get these pending calculations. So folder might pull off the first element in the list and then make a recursive call with the rest but the actual computation that happens first is only when we get down to this bottom base case where init is returned and then this folder where uh, the rest of L is empty returns that init or that initial value or kind of our base case value and we first call the function with the first of the list which is the last element and whatever that base case value was. And foldl uses last and but last, which we know are each O of n. And first and rest, we've talked about that, is they're each O of 1. Sorry, they're each in O of 1. So again, empty, cons, and rests, and if, things we've seen like that, are all in O of 1. So our recurrence relationship for folder can also be that for input of size 0, it takes one step. For input of size n, where n is the length of the list, it takes one step plus it makes a recursive call with one smaller. And when we unrolled this in the past, we found that this was in O of one, n. Let's try and write the recurrence relationship for full dull. And I'll keep going, but you can pause it. So here, because we called last and but last, which we already figured out were in O of n, when we make a recursive call with size n, where n is the length of the list, it takes n steps, and then it also makes a recursive call with one smaller. And in the past, when we unrolled this expression, we saw that it was in O of n squared. Okay, the next challenge is to try and write smush. Uh, so smush concatenates all of the elements of the list, the input list, um, and you can assume that all of the elements of L are lists. So it's a list of sublists, and it doesn't include any elements. Oh, sorry, it doesn't include any elements that aren't lists. And you can see with this element, which was the list with a list with a list with a list three, four in it, it doesn't uh, get rid of all of those. It just gets rid of the outer ones, just like it does for the two and the one and the five. So you can pause, but I'll keep going. So here we're essentially appending them all. And our base case is going to be the empty list. And if you didn't get this one right, you might try what you tried and see how the result is different. And going back to that earlier step where we traced out what calls to cons would happen or what calls to list would happen for the various calls, it might be super helpful to trace through even a simple example that just has the list one and the list two as the sublists and then see what calls yours would have made. And I just think it's interesting to point out that if I had used foldl, or foldl. Here I've called the function smush left instead. I end up with a different order. So there's uh, the smush left which uh, flips things around before appending them. Okay, just quickly returning to our learning goals and folder is going to be the one that's more consistent with the ways we've been writing code uh, recursively using first and rest. And that one's going to be the one with the better big O runtime because it's in O of n where n is the length of the list. 